evening and welcome to our service from St. Lawrence Gessling for this, the 16th Sunday after Trinity. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. We say together, Almighty God, your Son has opened for us a new and living way into your presence. Give us new hearts and constant wills to worship you in spirit and in truth, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first hymn today is Lord of all hopefulness. We say together, Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. We say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his Spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. We say together the Collect for the 16th Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have the grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the book of James, starting at chapter 3, verse 13, and ending at chapter 4, verse 8a. The section is entitled, The Wisdom from Above. Is there anyone among you who is wise and understanding? He is to prove it by his good life, by his good deeds performed with humility and wisdom. But if in your heart you are jealous, bitter and selfish, don't sin against the truth by boasting of your wisdom. Such wisdom does not come down from heaven, it belongs to the world. It is unspiritual and demonic. Where there is jealousy and selfishness, there is also disorder and every kind of evil. But the wisdom from above is pure, first of all. It is also peaceful, gentle and friendly. It is full of compassion and produces a harvest of good deeds. It is free from prejudice and hypocrisy. And goodness is the harvest that is produced from the seeds the peacemakers plant in peace. Where do all fights and quarrels among you come from? They come from your desires for pleasure, which are constantly fighting within you. You want things, but you cannot have them. You are ready to kill. You strongly desire things, but you cannot get them. So you quarrel and fight. You do not have what you want because you do not ask God for it. And when you ask, you do not receive it because your motives are bad. You ask for things to use for your own pleasures. So then submit to God, resist the devil, and he will run away from you. Come near to God, and he will come near to you. Wash your hands, you sinners. Purify your hearts, you hypocrites. This is the word of the Lord. Our second hymn today is Breathe on me, breath of God. 
The Gospel reading is taken from the book of Mark, chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. The section is entitled, Jesus Speaks Again About His Death. Jesus and his disciples left that place and went on through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know where he was because he was teaching his disciples. The Son of Man will be handed over to men who will kill him. Three days later, however, he will rise to life. But they did not understand what this teaching meant and they were afraid to ask him. They came to Capernaum and after going indoors, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you arguing about on the road? But they would not answer him because on the road they had been arguing amongst themselves about who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the 12 disciples and said to them, whoever wants to be first must place himself last of all and be the servant of all. Then he took a child and made him stand in front of them. He put his hands around them and said to them, whoever welcomes in my name one of these children welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not only me, but also the one who has sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Good morning. Our reflection for this Sunday is based on Mark chapter 9, verses 30 to 37. In our Gospel reading this morning, we see Jesus and his disciples travelling through Galilee. He was teaching his disciples and he said to them, The Son of Man will be handed over and will be killed. Three days after his death, the Son of Man will rise. His disciples did not understand what Jesus was saying to them. Would what he foretold really come true? How could that be? Jesus was a great teacher and rabbi, and they hesitated to question him about this. So when they arrived in Capernaum, when they were settled in the house where they were staying, Jesus asked his disciples, what were you arguing about during our journey? The disciples were silent and embarrassed. The topic of their conversation had been who was the greatest among them. Most likely they knew that Jesus would not approve of their conversation. But of course, Jesus knew what they were arguing about. So he turned to his disciples and said, Whoever wishes to be first shall be the last of all and the servant of all. Jesus then called a little child over to them and said to his disciples, Whoever receives one child in my name receives me. Whoever receives me receives the one who sent me. The tenderness of Jesus' love for children is immense. In every adult, there is an inner child, vulnerable, sensitive, playful, open. And before the world casts its film of familiarity, of boredom and cynicism, the child in us was full of wonder. It is only through wonder that we can experience the glory and the greatness of God. Many of the great saints retain that capacity for wonder, a delight in creator and creation, an enduring youthfulness. The great Dominican mystic Meister Urquhart joyfully claimed that, that my soul is as young as when I was created, I much younger, and I tell you, I should not be ashamed were she not younger tomorrow than today. Power and renown. In our world today, this is what many people long and strive for, just as the disciples were discussing. But think of all the movie stars, the rock singers, models, and political candidates who vie for publicity power and fame. Do they actually believe that these will bring them true happiness? 
or are they simply caught up in the world's values? Jesus wants us to find our happiness and security in him, not in fame or fortune. Naturally, we want others to think well of us. But in and of itself, this is not bad. However, we get into trouble when we are driven to look good or to achieve so that we can gain status and honour and esteem. We believe that people will approve of us and what we have accomplished. But that is not the Jesus way. I find it totally ironic that while Jesus was trying to teach the apostles the deep act of love he was going to express on the cross, they were thinking entirely differently. In all true acts of loving, one is always putting the one loved at the centre, and the contentment in so doing is the joy experienced in doing that. According to Jesus, all such acts are seen by God as a self-giving to God himself. Oh, what a privilege. We must always remember that Jesus reminds us that greatness is found in loving service of the weaker members of the community. Today, I invite you to take some time and ask yourself, how important is power, renown and admir admiration to me? Do I consciously or unconsciously strive to look good? Do I hope that others admire me? Or am I content to be simple, pure and loving like a child? Young children have no guile. They are simply who they are. They are immature. And they can be a great example to us for what truly is important in life. Today, observe a child, imitate a child, and you may find that you will have a more joyful, peacing and relaxing day. I offer this reflection in the name of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The psalmist said, be still and know that I am God. I am the Lord that heals you. In you, O Lord, do we put our trust. So let us, in this moment of time, just be still for a few moments. For the presence of the Lord is with each of us now. Lord Jesus, you are the light that the darkness can never conquer. Pour your light, we pray, into the darkness of the world so that people can see better ways of solving problems. Pour your light into the confusion of our national difficulties, especially in the problem of funding social care. Pour your light so that all people can see new strategies and possibilities in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, you are the love that casts out fear. Pour your love into all the hearts of all who have been abandoned or let down and who vow they will never love again. Pour your love into the troubled minds of those suffering mental instability and who do not know which voice to obey. Pour your love into all those who are coping with mental illness across our land. May they obtain all the medical help that they desperately need. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord. Amen.
Lord Jesus, you are the peace that the world cannot give. Pour your peace into the United Nations and its Security Council, that peace may be the goal of their work, and only peace as the method of getting there. Pour your peace into all the war-torn nations, like in Ethiopia, but we especially ask that you bring peace into the whole of the Middle East. We think of Afghanistan at this time and pray that all those left behind obtain their freedom very soon. Pour your peace into the souls of the various communities in which we live so that people may believe that you are alive. Pour your peace into our own hearts as we try to live out our heavenly citizenship in an alien land. We offer this prayer in the name of Jesus. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the way that leads to the Father. Show us your way through the problems that face the nation at this moment in time. We pray for all in authority, particularly our Queen and all the royal family, and particularly her government in these difficult times. Show your way to those who are seeking the meaning of life and integrity, but who have not yet looked to you and you alone. Show your way to each of us in our benefice so that we may know the next steps in our pilgrimage of faith together. Amen. Lord Jesus, you are the vine whose branches we are. We pray for those we know who belong to this part of the vine, but are at the present having a difficult time for whatever reason. We pray for those who have been bereaved. We pray especially for Laurie and her family. Be with them in their grief. But we ask that Dave does rest in your peace and rise in your glory. We pray for those who are sick, the lonely, and those who may be in hospital, especially Graham, and those still affected by COVID-19. In the quietness, we pray especially for those known to us who need to feel the healing love of yourself. Come now, we pray, and touch all who are in pain and distress. Heal those who have stopped believing in themselves. Comfort those who are at the end of their tether and pour into their hearts the gentle balm of your healing spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. With a prayer you fed the hungry. With a cry you stilled the storm. With a look you had compassion on the desperate and forlorn. With a touch you healed the leper. With a shout you raised the dead. With a word you expelled the demons. With a blessing you broke the bread. As the sheep before the shearer, you were silent in your pain. You endured humiliation at the hands of those you made 
crying, Father God, forgive them. Place your punishment on me. Lord Jesus, we thank you. So gathering our prayers and praises into one, let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us declare together our faith in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures. He was buried. He was raised to life on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. Afterwards, he appeared to his followers and to all the apostles. This we have received and this we believe. Amen. Our final hymn today is God is working his purpose out. Remember the words of Jesus. If anyone would be first, he must be last of all and servant of all. May God give you the faith and love to put this into practice and the humility to permit others to do the same for you. The blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and those you love, today and always. Amen. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. <laughs>